Good evening and welcome to the Select Board Board of Health Sewer Commissioners meeting for the Town of Deerfield, July 24, 2024 uh, at 6 p.m. This meeting will be held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation. Please note that while an option for remote attendance and or participation is being provided as a courtesy to the public, the meeting hearing will not be suspended or terminated if technological problems interrupt the virtual broadcast unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with particular interest in any specific item on this agenda should make plans for in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. The meeting will be held in person in the main meeting room of Deerfield Municipal Offices. In accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 30A, anyone intending to record the meeting must identify themselves to the clerk, Blake Gilmore, and provide their name and address for the record. So, you know, call the meeting to order. And, um, we will have um, actually going to t try and time public comment tonight so that we can limit it to the two minute period. So if there's anybody who would like to make a two minute comment, please uh, come up to one of the mics and uh, state your name and where you live. Good, Good evening. Good. How are you? Good. I'm Lori Baronis. I live on South Mill River Road, and I was here at your last meeting when uh, Cheryl Bahanowitz's name came up for the zoning board. Mm -hmm. And I was surprised. Um, I asked her why she didn't provide any more information on her background. And she said that she had dropped off her application to a young man here at the town hall and was told someone would get back to her. No one ever got back to her. She has over 30 um, years of experience with this committee, as her husband was the um, chair of the board most of those years, and went to every single meeting. Not to say that Tia or any, anybody else that you put on that committee isn't worthy of it, but I just think that someone should have gotten back to her and maybe given her an opportunity to apply for that position. And especially since you said one of the people on the board was already on three other committees, and this is where her expertise was. So um, I just would hope in the future that if people submit their name, that you would um, check, check them out a little bit and maybe ask them a few questions or at least give them a call and let them know when it's coming up on the agenda because she wasn't notified that her name was even coming up that night and didn't have an opportunity to uh, present her case. So I'm just hoping that in the future, that if we want to get some town participation from other people, um, new people, maybe you would take that into consideration in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Thank for, you your for your comment. comment. Anyone else? Dave Johnson. Go ahead. Oh. Hi, I'm William Waldron. I live on River Road. Uh, William, can you speak a little closer to the mic? Uh, apparently, it's hard for people on Zoom to hear us. Well, yeah, William Waldron on River Road. Um, is this appropriate to ask questions here? Or well, you, you can ask questions, comments? but we, won't, we, we can take it under advisement, but we're not going to be responding to the comments. You don't respond. We, no, we can get back no, to I you. Mean, we'll we'll have Casey uh, Warren, you know, take down what you want us to research, but we may not have the the, the answer immediately. Okay, I'm curious. About, I read in the paper about the um, pipe at the uh, Salt Deerfield sewer treatment plant, mm -hmm. and um, I'm just a little curious about that. I have a few questions about that, and. Um, my first one was, when did anyone become aware that there was a problem with that pipe? Um, yeah. And why wasn't it part of the rehabilitation of the, of the sewer plant um, that we just went through? How does it just get discovered now? Or did it just get discovered now? And um, I'm also wondering where the break is. Um, maybe it's right at the riverbank. Uh, uh, because I took a walk over there and kind of looked at it and I see that there's, there's a hole in the ground yep. and it looks like it's been there for a very long time and wondering what's the problem. Uh, 
If you want to call me, I can give you my number. I'm happy to talk to you offline about all of that. Okay. Update you and give you any background you need. Okay. I can. Um, do you want to write that down or sure. talk to me? Why don't I do that? Uh, a piece of paper I can write on for you. Did you have, did you have, other, did one, you have other questions? Yeah, you? one other thing, not in regards to the... You are running out of time. Okay, just a quickly, uh, I'm wondering about the minutes from all town committees. Um, where do we find those? I know there's a place on the town website that says minutes, but almost all of them are blank. Where do we, where do we get that information? So it is on the town website. Most of the time you can find them on the pages. Each, committee. Each committee's page a lot of times has them all, list, all listed. And then you can, if there's anything current, like in the last three years, you, you can always watch them YouTube, the whole meeting if you want, on yeah. FCAP. Yeah. Uh, but yes, we do have meetings minutes um, usually on each board. Okay, so we're right. we're responding and, and thank you for your All concerns. Right. I think both of them are very important, and maybe we can uh, uh, have a report from Trevor about yep. the sewer outlet pipe in an upcoming meeting. Cool. Uh, any other comments, Mr. Johnson? Call me anytime. Anytime. Good to talk to you. Evening, gentlemen. Um, I would just like to review some things uh, regarding the burial of the horse adjacent to my property. Horse was buried May 28th. June 12th, myself, Bill Mono, and Matt Troxell came in to verbalize our concerns and to point out the immediacy of doing something at that point in time. We also provided information regarding uh, what was going to occur over time regarding a possible biohazard. Uh, subsequently, um, Whatever was going on was going on behind the scenes. I understand subsequently there were some conversations with people. Um, and uh, when I came back on the, on the 26th, it didn't appear that a whole lot of action had taken place. When I was here again on July 10th, um, Mr. Hilchi, you said to me that you had spoken to Masood Hashimi, and he had reassured you that a carcass of a deer or some such thing dying in the field, there, there are no 800, 800 pound deer, um, and that um, in your opinion, it was one person's wants versus an expert. And, and that's a quote, you can check the video, it's there. Uh, okay, that's not the case. The case is that Bill Mono, one Kelleher Drive, Matt and Samantha Troxell, 110, North Main Street and David Johnson, 112 North Main Street, were, are, and continue to be concerned about this. Um, you also said to me in the 10th that you don't see this as a nuisance at this point. However, on June 12th, you said, and I quote, if I were the neighbor, I would feel that way too. Okay, the, the question I have is, there's been no soil sampling, there's been no scientific anything other than a conversation uh, with uh, Dr. Hashimi. Can you definitively provide me with a statement in writing that the fruit in my yard is and will continue to be safe to eat, okay. that, it's, that it's safe for me to host my annual business barbecue, and that the groundwater seeping into my basement is not and will not subsequently be contaminated? That's all we've been asking for since the very beginning. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Any other comments? Okay, so um, we have a public hearing coming up at the 20th, but uh, in the interim, maybe we can take care of a couple of pieces of business that are scheduled for later in the meeting. Um, can. There we go. That's why. <laughs> it keeps popping on and off. There we go. Oh, that's why. There we go. So, Trevor, can we? Um, I'd like to 
Sorry. take up these uh, what, this one day liquor license sure. for the Franklin Land Trust. Yeah, I'll make some motions on that. Yeah. Let's get to those. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve a one day liquor license. Um, for the Franklin Land Trust, um, the D2R2 fundraiser, Dirt Church Brewing Company, selling and serving beer from taps on site from 5 to 9 p.m. on the dates of uh, August 16, 2024. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Um, Casey, all of the insurance paperwork and yes. everything is in order? Yep. Yes. Okay, motion's been made and seconded. Um, all those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Blake Gilmore, aye. Tim Hilchey, aye. And then I would like to make a, a motion to approve the Franklin Lang Trust One Day Liquor License um, for the D D2R2 fundraising that uh, Berkshire Brewing Company, BBC, serving beer from taps on site from 2 to 9 p.m. at the main registration tent on Mill Village Road. That would be for the date of August 17th, 2024. Second. And in both of these, um, we are going to waive the associated fee because it's a nonprofit charity yes. event. Yep, as we where typically is, do. Where is located this is on Mill Village Road. They, they uh, on the way to kind of the the fields in De an old deer field. They set up the tents and do the bike ride each year yep. to raise money for the Franklin it's, Land Trust. It's closer to old deer field. Like That's that. correct. Okay, it's yep. on Yap's property. Yap's property. Okay. Yep, mm -hmm. usually. Yep. Um, so motion has been made and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Blake Gilmore, aye. Tim Hilchey, aye. Right. Thank you. Right, let me see if I got the You want to do the appointments of uh, Skems? Skems? Yeah, why don't we start that? Okay. Um, we have a request from uh, Chief Joshua Sparks for new appointments to South County EMS. Um, there are five uh, people that he was going to request a re um, appointment on per diem basis. So I would make a motion to uh, approve Samantha, Samantha Baker um, at uh, for FY25 rate, grade C, per diem, EMT basic, step one, 2362 an hour. I'll make a motion to approve um, Gabrielle Benz, full-time EMT, um, for the uh, same position, FY25 rate, grade C, per diem EMT, step one, 2362 per hour. Uh, Sean Duma, which I make a motion to approve Sean Duma. Um, he is an experienced paramedic um, at the FY25 rate, grade E, per diem paramedic, step one at 3123 per hour. And I'll make a motion to approve uh, Matthew Hall, also a full-time firefighter experienced paramedic in ties with EMS. Um, FY25 rate, grade E per diem paramedic, step one, uh, 3123 an hour. And finally, Nicole Thornton, I'll make a motion to approve Nicole Thornton, a full-time firefighter EMT at a FY25 rate, grade C per diem EMT basic, step one at 2362 per hour. I'll second that. Great. Um, any discussion? Nope. So these these five people all come highly recommended by uh, Chief Sparks, um, who's done interviews with them uh, along with the staff. So mm -hmm. um, I'm pleased to see that uh, we have a renewed interest in per diems. Yeah, very lucky to have have these qualified people serving um, Deerfield, uh, Sundowan, and Waitley. So uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Blake Gilmore, aye. Tim Hilchey, aye. Great, thank you very much. Is there anything else we can easily knock off, Casey? I think you could just pass over sunny days and ask me to make sure it gets on the next agenda, <laughs> since we don't have an HCA to look at. Oh, right, okay. Think, yeah, so, um, well, we can get to that. Yeah, well, let's, uh, let's, um, pass over the sunny days under discussion decision items uh, the HCA re renewal and uh, take it up uh, after town council's gotten back to us about some issues concerning whether we need to do this or not. Okay. Is that a motion? 
No, I think we can no, just, I'm just pass myself over. A note. Yeah. To um, do we need to wait on the Zach's barbecue, or is that just also um, some work to be done? Mm, that there might take longer. Okay. Yeah. I see. All right. No, we can wait. What else we got? Mm, okay. Any comments? Do you guys have any announcements? Uh, well, I, I just I know that um, I'll just broach the subject of the senior flu clinic. I know that you've been working on, and everybody in the staff has been working on with um, Meg Tudrin, a location which I think has been secured at yes. the Deerfield, uh, South Deerfield Fire District um, meeting room that they, they're going to be holding a, the annual senior flu clinic. Um, and I assume it's just flu and not COVID this year? It's just flu. Just flu itself. And hopefully there'll be the high doses as well. Um, and uh, I know that Meg's putting that together. I can't remember the date. Do you, do you recall? She... Let me see. I she didn't. She said don't early. think we have one early. Yet. Okay, yeah, not early. a date yet, but yeah. just yeah. be on the lookout for a um, for a flu clinic, and yeah. then we'll still be looking to. Um, you know, each year we usually do a flu clinic, or we have in the in the past at, at the highway garage a drive through flu clinic, um, and I thought we should probably have a discussion on that at some point to see if that's something we'd want to do again. Um, it's usually pretty popular and. One day in October we do it, and it, you know, we get quite a few of the residents done, um, as long as people have their insurance card and all. So, yeah, I think we should definitely put that onto a discussion for the next meeting. Yep. So that we'll have it in time for consideration uh, scheduling. All right. Um, so are the are the folks involved in the spirit shop here and and are we into and i see chief pachorics here so if Good. um i guess we'll start <clears throat> take three minutes to read it yeah there you go so in the matter of the deerfield spirit shop on july 10 2024 notice was sent by a certified first class mail and electronic mail pursuant to the provisions of GLC chapter 138 section 64 to the holder of the license issued pursuant to GLC 138 section 15 to conduct business at premises located at 53 C South Main Street South Deerfield that a hearing would be held today July 24 2024 at 6 620 p.m. The purpose of the hearing is for the select board as the local licensing authority to determine whether the license holder has violated the provisions of said chapter 138 or any rules and regulations promulgated under the authority of that chapter and if such violation is found to have occurred whether such license should be modified suspended or revoked in accordance with glc 138 section 23. the subject to be discussed is the alleged violation of applicable law specifically whether the licensee or employee of said licensee violated the provisions of General Law Chapter 138, Section 34, through the sale or delivery of alcohol to a minor person. Um, <clears throat> so, make a motion to open the hearing. Yes. You want to do that? Yep. Motion to open the hearing. Second. Right. All those in favor? Aye. Chair McDaniel. Blake Gilmore, aye. Tim Hilchey, aye. So um, anyone who's going to be giving testi testimony will swear in. So um, I'll invite. Sure. Come up, whatever. Yeah. Come on, Steve. So prior to offering any evidence, I ask if there is anyone here who will be presenting evidence to the board to, to stand, raise your right hand, and repeat after me. I state your name. I, John Pachork. Uh, swear that the testimony I'm about to provide is the whole truth. I swear that the testimony I'm about to provide is the whole truth. The testimony I'm about to provide is the whole truth. Thank you. All right. So, um, Chief Pachork, will you be uh, presenting the alleged violation? 
Sure, good evening. Thank you so much for uh, all the notifications. Thank you for Mr. Schechterly, who's always been amazing and very responsive to anything we've ever needed over at the Spirit Shop. Sergeant Ravish, uh, who I think most people know, Brian Ravish is the school resource officer. Uh, he conducts semi-annual uh, check-ins with all the liquor establishments by request of not only Deerfield, he does them in Hatfield, Waitley, and Sunderland. So he actually grabs two seniors from high school he makes sure they don't have any money on them, and he photocopies their driver's licenses. They both have to be seniors in their 18 years of age. He then takes them around and gives them money that we establish out of the drug forfeiture fund. They walk into establishments and they try and buy alcohol. Sometimes they're chased out, sometimes they're cursed out, and sometimes he has to intervene with the irate employees coming after them. Uh, on May 1st of this year, he did go in, well, the 18-year-old uh, the male, he usually chooses one male, one female, kind of rotates them. The 18-year-old male did go into the spirit shop in downtown South Deerfield and unfortunately purchased a six-pack of Budweiser out of uh, the cooler in there without being carded by the employee working that day. Sergeant Ravish went in and uh, spoke to the employee. He admitted that he just completely forgot to ask for the person's driver's license was extremely apologetic. I had the occasion to meet with uh, the owner, Steve Schechterly, who I've known for many, many years, um, his business manager, and go through a corrective action plan that I think uh, Steve would probably be much more um, better off to describe than I would. But I was very, very satisfied with their corrective action plan that they were coming up with. So the bottom line is, is we did find one violation in Deerfield unfortunately was the spirit shop and we usually get word of mouth uh, who's supplying a lot of the alcohol in the region and I can tell you it is absolutely not the spirit shop the spirit shop is normally the complaint that I get about my 57 to 58 year olds being carded still and how it's an inconvenience for them so this is not the norm out of the Deerfield spirit shop so um, would you like to make some Comments? Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Chief. I, I appreciate the kind words. Um, I'd, I'd like to be sitting here saying that this is not true, um, but I've read uh, Brian Ravish's report. Everything that was in the report, unfortunately, didn't occur. I'm not, I'm not here to say it didn't happen. Um, <laughs> I understand the town is uh, following state mandated regulations now, which I fully support 100%. Um, you know, it, I mean, this is terribly embarrassing for me, you know, being in town for so many years. Uh, we do run a respectable business. We've, we've procedurally over the years have fine-tuned to the point where I have 100% faith in, in procedurally how things are supposed to go and how my management uh, lays out the laws. Um, the accountability for anyone who, who does make a, a sale or something against the law is they immediately are, are fired, which did happen in this instance. Um, None of my management has ever um, failed a sting or anything against the law. We've, we've always run a tight ship. So in, I'm not here to defend the actions, but what I am here to do is explain the, uh, what we've come up with. We've racked our brains because procedurally we, we've got everything laid out. We've invested money in ID machines. We've made it so simple. All of our, all of our employees, every single one of them, are repeatedly um, trained at the BAT level. Uh, that's provided through Mass Package Store Association, of which I'm a board member of, which makes mm -hmm. us doubly embarrassing uh, because that's our, you know, that's the our reason for existence is to, you know, promulgate uh, safe service and and so that small business can um, survive in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. So what we've done is uh, we've 
racked our brains, tried to figure out where our weakness is. It's, it's not our management, it's not our procedures, um, but I think with, as with many other industries, part-time help is, is where mm -hmm. our failure has been every time. Right. And we can lay down the law, we can um, threaten them with you know, losing their job. It doesn't seem to matter. Right. Um, the, the, the amount of apathy that exists is, is something that we, we just can't work with. So, I mean, to our financial detriment, um, but also with some, some other safety issues that have occurred, you know, um, in Sunderland recently, we've decided that minimizing our exposure to the weakness is the best we can do. Right. So what we've come up with is we are going to, first of all, shorten our hours uh, so that we can afford to hire full-time employees. Full-time employment offers, you know, benefits, vacation, right. um, you know, higher pay, something that would attract the type of employee that would take the job seriously, right. and and have the the uh, the accountability is if they lose that job, they're losing a, a, a higher-paying job. They right. have something to lose. You know, more likely they're providing for a family than a, a transient college student or someone who just doesn't care. So what we've done is, in all stores, is have decreased hours. Um, we're making arrangements, and we've already done so in Deerfield, uh, to, to hire, we have all full-time employees. Uh, except for, I think we've minimized it down to like three hours, three or four hours on, um, I believe, Sunday, which is an earlier closing anyway. Mm -hmm. So the rest of the time, management will be there on, on site uh, and we won't be exposed. We're, we'll be minimally exposed to having part-time help holding down the fort, so to speak. Um, it's, it's unfortunate. Um, like I said, procedurally, we, we are bomb-proof. Right. All, all these employees have to do is follow our guidelines, which is, you know, if, unless you know that person, or I mean, unless you don't know that person, right. I'm saying this wrong. <laughs> if you don't know the person um, and you for sure that they are of age, then you must card them. If you've never seen them before, you must card them. Um, it is annoying for her. Sometimes we do get employees complaining, or not employees, uh, customers complaining because some of my employees take it over the top, but if they haven't seen them before, it's better. It's the way it goes. And what I, I'm trying to avoid is carding every single person every single time they come in. You know, it, it's just, you know, that would really upset my customer base uh, because we see a lot of people, you know, two, three times a week, you know. Right. We know them. We know everyone in our community. Um, and my management knows everyone in, in the community. Uh, Jake was born and raised here. Um, yep. Everybody knows Jake. Uh, so I, I have complete faith in, in my management team. And I think by making these changes, it, it's, it's all, I can, all I can come up with, all we came up with. Um, right. It it's going to be an inconvenience because we're, our operating hours are shortened for our, our customer base, but we feel that the hours that we've cut off, which are the uh, the late hours, hmm. um, you know, we're okay with foregoing that business 
in exchange for you know decreasing exposure to bad yeah. things so thank you for bearing yeah. with me at that description but that's that's what we've come up with and I fully accept what the board uh, comes up with as punishment uh, fines whatever okay we uh, will happily take them on so um, do any board members have questions for you either chief or mr. Schechter yeah Steve um, is there do you have any other training that you might be able to do with some of these employees and again I understand that you're not gonna have the part-time employees but even with some of your full-time employees maybe you bring in somebody that you know could be of age mm -hmm. to see if they get carded or they don't get carded kind of like a, and doing that on a you know it doesn't have to be every week or anything like that but doing it so that it just kind of keeps them on their toes a little bit no Blake uh, that's it's uh, I obviously uh, forgotten that aspect because we have done that we've hired uh, the bars program um, which is a private agency that does come to each of our locations and does uh, stings and they let us know you know how our team has been doing and Perfect. since uh, I, think, I think we've hired them well we hired them right after the incident um, as another step to keep people on their toes and we haven't failed one yet so that and I can provide documentation for that if, if you need uh, but so we we are doing everything that we can think of and, and that was a right. great idea and I'm embarrassed I forgot to bring that up but it's all good yeah Trevor no I, um, but I'm, I'm good I think we'll have to after you close the meeting maybe we talk but I don't have any yeah, questions do we, just a question for you Casey do we need to do the discussions um, any further discussion before we close the hearing if you don't think you need to take any more evidence my thought would be to yeah. um, do you decide how you want to handle the next two pieces which is determine whether the violation has occurred and what a penalty might be okay so um, if there's no other evidence to be entered uh, then I would take a motion to close the hearing I make a motion to close the hearing second all those in favor Trevor McDaniel aye Blake Gilmore aye Tim Hilchey aye okay so um, discussion I think that um, what they've done here is they've they've started to uh, um, and I think they've done a good job as far as uh, rectifying the situation and making sure that it doesn't happen again again I think the fact that the weak link is definitely part-time employees and that even can be in the you know the uh, food industry again you know handing out drinks and that sort of thing I, I know that I come from a community that's down near the uh, the ocean and summer help is always there and there's a lot of violations that go on down there so I'm saying I think that they have really taken this serious and I'm, I'm, I'm impressed with the move that they've already made um, I well I guess I would just um, enter, enter, uh, make a motion to um, affirm that a, that a violation has occurred that we can move on so make that motion that a violation has occurred second they don't disagree yep yeah I mean and it's uh, both parties have agreed that a violation occurred so right. um, there's ample evidence for yep. that so um, all those in favor Trevor McDaniel aye Blake Gilmore aye Tim Hilchey aye um, so in this portion of discussion what we want to do about this it sounds as though um, with the uh, uh, compliance is the thing we want we don't want to necessarily punish a business for a mistake that was made this is my personal opinion um, and it sounds that as though the police have worked with the uh, with the uh, violation to to find a solution to um, correcting the issue and uh, so I personally think that uh, this is the right approach to take um, but I would like to hear from the other board members about whether um, there's any motion that we want to make about yep. future violation so I, I think um, not the first time we've been here right Correct. since since I've been on the board and I know it's always been 
part-time people who don't care, right. right? They get whatever, an hour, and like you said, they don't have benefits. What's it to them? They lose a job, they pick one up somewhere else. Super easy. Um, and it's not like you can penalize them. They're not the ones getting the fines. Um, and I'm sure you got, you know, you get a fine for this kind of thing, um, which also has increased recently too. Um, so it, it's serious, and I know that you've addressed it. I know you care about this deeply, and I know Chief has, has looked at this as well. Um, so, you know, we have to come up with a with a penalty, and I think that um, I think the action that you've taken and the steps that you're doing to reduce your hours is is somewhat of a penalty too, and the cost to to do it. But I think it's the right move going forward because I don't see another way. Uh, aside from a machine that just cards everything that you're going to pull out of a cooler, I don't know how you you right. do it any other way. Um, it, it's human, human, in, in, you know, human action. So you'll have an error here and there. Um, if if you know the options are to you know close the business for a couple of days, I I think. Um, with the seriousness that you've taken here, if we were going to do that, I would suspend that action in case, you know, so if we would suspend, say, a motion to suspend the business for two days, but I would suspend that, providing we don't have another violation for two years, and then that would be lifted. So um, that's, you know, I mean, we can close the business for two, two days, but that, I don't know what that's really going to do for you other than the steps you've already taken. You've worked with the chief and you obviously know the seriousness of that. But I think that, you know, we have to set some, it's a, you know, it's a serious thing. People can buy that, go drink it, get drunk, smash a car, lose a life, all that. So it is a serious thing. And I think that if we made that um, motion to, you know, to suspend operations for two days and suspend that um, that penalty for two years, providing there isn't any other interaction. I think that would be a safe um, it's a penalty. It's hanging over, um, and obviously it comes with a lot more violations if it's you know if if we're here again and within two years. So um, I'm, I'm in agreement with Trevor on that, except that I would say we instead of the two years one year mm -hmm. and again that's just my opinion on the different violations i've dealt with in the past and that sort of thing I, so i would take i'm fine with that so do you want to make a motion along those lines so i'll make a motion to um suspend operations for two days two business days and that we would um suspend that uh that uh penalty for uh one year of uh business until um, July 24th, 2025. If there's no other violations, that'll be lifted. I second that. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Blake Gilmore, aye. Tim Hilchey, aye. So I hope that uh, seems satisfactory. I, I, I want to thank you for you know coming and giving forth come, uh, forthright testimony, the, acknowledging the mistake. And, uh, and having a plan in place to address that going forward. I, I appreciate your uh, consideration and I, I'm very pleased and happy to uh, you know, make this not happen again. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thank it you. It sounds like you have a good plan. Okay. Thank you, Chief. Appreciate Thanks. it, Chief. Okay. Thanks, thank Chief. you, Steve. Steve, thank you. So, we have five minutes until the next uh, the next um, meeting, uh, scheduled meeting. So, is there anything else, Casey, that we could knock off? Oh, would you like me to go through some report stuff? Sure. I can do that. Okay. So, I've been working after the select board meeting on Thursday. I've been working on negotiating with a successful candidate for the hire. He and I are going to meet on Friday to discuss what his counter is, and I will let the board know what's going on once I have more information. Okay, great. That's good. Um, I've begun, I've actually been working with Dick and Valerie, and I 
don't know if Valerie's still here, but she She's was. on. Yep. Um, on reviewing the resumes, we've gotten four. Um, and I've started to set up interviews. There's one interview that's set up next Tuesday. This is, for, this is for the Board of Health agent. For the health agent yeah. position, mm -hmm. yes. Um, I haven't heard back from the other candidate yet, but I'm hoping I hear from them by tomorrow. If not, I'm going to reach out again. Um, so we're going to start doing that and hopefully have something to give to the board as soon as possible. Uh, there's been several road complaints that I've taught, been working with Chris Miller on. You know, One is the North Hillside Road runoff. We received a call from John Stacy about runoff that's impacting the road as well as his property and another neighbor's property. So Okay. I saw those emails. Yeah. Interim superintendent. Uh, Miller's gone out there. They've put some trap rock out, but he went out today to talk to Mr. Stacy. I don't know what the result of that conversation is yet, okay. but I told Mr. Stacy that I would work with Chris to figure out you know, what we can do. Certainly, if it's impacting the roadway, we need to figure out how to mitigate that damage. Mm -hmm. um, we really can't work on private property, but we need to be careful about our own property. Right. Um, River Road, I met with Chris earlier. He actually had two meetings with Weston and Sampson engineers. This was the engineering company that worked on the fix for the area of River Road that seems to be deteriorating. It's right in front of... Um, Dick's house. Yeah, yep. Board of Health Agent Kalaszewski's house. Mm -hmm. It's they, near your house. Right, but do they, um, did they look at the other one that's right in front of Beaver? They didn't look at that. They looked at River Road. They were focused on River Road. And so he met with two people from WSE, and they seem to think that it's not a slope failure because there's other fixtures along that area that are not showing any leaning. It's probably more of a compaction issue. Um, so what they suggested we do is borings. That's about 15000 and a survey of that site area, and that's about 5000 And using that information and analysis, they would develop alternatives to fix the issues. It wouldn't be a design, but it would be a suggestion for how we could go forward to a design. Um, so I'm planning on meeting with Chris and Brenda as soon as we can to figure out funding to pay for those two things. Right. Um, I don't know what that will look like, but we've got to figure something out before it gets any worse. Should we have a, like a, a, a board meeting with Weston Sampson once they get something together that really? Kinda, I think you need the we've been analysis. Going around first. and around and around with this thing for, you know. Is this in the 526 area or where is it? I mean, this is right in front of Dick Kalashevsky's house, so it's beyond. I think it's beyond the guardrail point. There's Beaver Drive in there. Right before the. Um, well, no, it is part, the guardrails are part center. of that. It is. Yeah, the guardrails are sinking thought. in there too. So this is right before the UMass agricultural area where the barns start. Mm -hmm. It's right before that. Um, I think we need to see what the analysis is before you guys can really chew on it too much because unless you want to take a site visit with um, Chris Miller and look at I it, will. but yeah. Yeah. they're not, I don't know that they're going to say much more than you need to do borings and you need to do a site survey so that you can get a better idea of what the conditions are in the, be below the road and uh, adjacent to the road. Um, yes, it has been it, deteriorating. It's, it's going to be forever with that road, you know, it's right on the river. It is, but I think the reason that Chris Miller contacted um, WSE was because they had done the work. They worked, right. walked us through the MassWorks grant and then handled um, the construction oversight after they did the design. So he was, wanted what, to talk to people. 20 years ago or something? Nope. It was 10, 10 years? They finished it 10 years ago. And it was almost, almost $800,000. Yeah. Um, uh, so I, I don't know. Taxpayers got it. You're know, like, I mean, this is... It's not just there, it's everywhere. I know, it is. We have roads that are just, you know, that's why we struggled to get that money to fix roads. And that was just the emergency stuff, let alone all the stuff that shows up constantly. I mean, we're going to have to, I know that we're gonna have finance to go committee into the next, had a, We're going to have to go into the next at 6.45. Yeah, so. all right. <laughs> finance committee had a, a meeting this week to yep. talk about so it. So let's come back to that to uh, later yep. in the meeting. We can. Okay. okay. All right, so at this point, um, <clears throat> We are going to 
reconsider uh, approval of MBZ Inc. Zach's Barbecue Section 12 Wine and Malt Liquor Licenses. Peter Langlois here. Hey, Peter. Yes. Welcome Don't back. Don't forget to speak into the mic. Yes, please uh, identify yourself and speak. Swallow the mic. Peter Langlois, president of NBZ Inc., owner of Zach's Barbecue. Yeah, pull that mic closer to you. Pull the mic Thank closer. you, sir. Thank you. So, um, Casey, can you just give us a quick overview on yes. where we are? So, we received a return no action from the ABCC in, for the request for a liquor license that Peter had put through with us back in April. Um, I didn't realize it wasn't here, so I didn't realize we needed to fix a lot of the deficiencies in the application. So Peter and I worked together through the outline that the ABCC official sent us of what needed to be fixed. He provided the documentation and we reviewed it together. And then I went back today and I reviewed the order of the items to make sure they're as correct as we can make them. Um, and what we, the necessary action is the board approved this in April. The board needs to take a vote of reconsideration for that approval to basically update their vote um, tonight. So everything's in order that we can make an order. Um, and we, Peter and I have had a couple conversations about this. So I think we're all ready to go if you guys are willing to take that vote. I'll move to approve reconsideration of the application for NBZ Inc. DBA Zach's Barbecue for a Section 12 on-premise pouring license Second. for wine and malt beverages as yep, presented. Sorry. Second. Thank you. And um, for purposes of discussion, what were the deficiencies? Or are they? Is it? Is it minutia that were? No, it was a few questions that hadn't you hadn't clicked. There wasn't. There hadn't been boxes checked. There were a couple of um, items around proof of um, mortgage. Proof, yeah. Proof of mortgage. Mortgage. Proof of mortgage. There was an explanation required as as to the startup costs. I have the entire file. Yeah. So this um, is like the 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 incomplete um, representation of um, Mr. Langlois. Yeah. Uh, full uh, duties related to Zach's and, and mm -hmm. a similar one for Teresa Langlois. Did I, am I pronouncing your, do you, do you pronounce the S or do you not pronounce the Langlois, S? Langlois, yeah. Langlois, okay. Yep. I, I speak French so I Unless you're Canadian. Yeah, I, I kind of <laughs> leave things the way I, yeah, so okay. And so you've, you've since corrected the documentation to list all of your titles and all of Teresa's titles uh, and um, you've gotten your quarry forms in order. Okay. Anything else that uh, that you needed to do, Casey, in order to bring this? No, I think you just have to take the vote and we will process the paperwork and send it back to the ABCC. Okay. Um, so is there any further discussion from anyone else? All right. Um, all those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Blake Gilmore, aye. Tim Hilchie, aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Peter. Peter. All right. Appreciate it. We'll get working on that tomorrow. Do we, do we need to sign this? You need to sign at the bottom right. In this little tiny box? Yep. In those little tiny boxes. Okay, in that little <laughs> tiny box, okay. This is you though, right? Mm. All three of us sign cases? Yes. Mm -hmm. And whenever you're ready, I believe Christopher's here. Yes. Um, over to you, Christopher. Done. All right, good evening, everyone. Um, just a couple of quick updates. I want to make sure all the select board members were aware of. Um, so first, with the Senior Center of Feasibility Study uh, with EDM Studio as a consultant, uh, they're going to be doing some workshops next week. Um, I believe they're going to be stopping by each of the proposed sites on Tuesday morning. Um, so they'll stop by the church, uh, then Waitley, and then the Oxford site over in Sunderland, and then they'll kind of wrap up that. Um, by going to the Delta Sand and Gravel building in Sunderland to, to talk with Jen about current space and programming. Um, so certainly if you're able to attend, uh, Trevor, I know I checked in with you. I think maybe that's a special day for you also. But yep. I'm going to try <laughs> try and make it. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Um, what day was it? Be back. Tuesday. Oh, sorry. Tuesday. What that was Tuesday. Tuesday the thirtieth. Yep. Okay. Yes. Yep. And then uh, they are going to be back on site. Um, I just let me double check the date. Actually, I believe it's August nineteenth. Um, to do some look at the mechanical and electrical and plumbing systems for those facilities as well. Yeah, Monday the nineteenth. And again, those are early morning visits, so they'll be here starting at eight a.m. eight a.m. sharp. Um, so just wanted to make sure everyone was aware of that. Um, really quick on the Leary lot, obviously construction is, is kicking off. So they, uh, you may have seen uh, the hasty fence went up uh, on Tuesday um, and they're just going to be doing some initial kind of grubbing and removing of vegetation this week. Um, and then they'll be moving forward with, um, you know, all the, the construction items on their list. So let me know if you have any questions. Um, I've been reaching out to abutters to make sure they're aware and, um, you know, if any issues come up, they have a, an open line of communication with Town Hall so we can make sure their needs are, are met and any issues are addressed. Um, and then real quick on the 1888 building, um, you know, we are, I believe, still just waiting on some language from Town Council uh, to add to the contract with Kuhn Riddle Architects. Um, we're going to have, uh, you know, I, I believe a contract in hand. Uh, for the next meeting of this body, um, next non-special meeting, I should say, um, so we can move forward with that as well. Um, so those are most of my updates. Uh, any any questions or other projects any select board members wanted to bring up? I know I saw conversations between you and DOT about the common, and I know that somebody's back from vacation, so they're digging through their pile of stuff, and we'll reply back to you on that. So thanks for keeping us, you know, following up on that. Uh, yeah, happy to, and, and we're, we've got tentatively August 6th as the next meeting for the committee, um, but we'll see if DOT has a chance to get his comments back in the yeah. interim. We can reschedule as needed. That's and good. can you give us a little update on uh, the progress of the sidewalks on North Main Street? It, they seem to have reached down to about 144 North Main Street the last I saw in terms of the actual surfacing, but uh, any any more that we want to share with the public? Yeah, I haven't uh, gotten a, a, an update um, from Chris Miller on that project this week. Um, you know, I've been talking to him every so often to make sure they're progressing along. Um, we'll, I'll check in with him and see if there are any issues that need to be addressed. Um, I know their plan is to complete the work prior to school being back in session, obviously. So we want to make sure they're, they're making it down the full length of North Main. Um, to Pleasant Street. Okay, great. Anything else? No, that's that's it for me. All right. Um, well, have a good evening. Thank you. Uh, Thanks, all. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. And Valerie Bird, um, wondered if you wanted to, uh, you know, give us some any comments that you needed to make about uh, anything related to Board of Health. I just wanted to give you a quick update. Um, so the case that we had, or that we didn't have, but the case we were involved in um, on a Greenfield Road, that case has been resolved. The occupant is, is leaving September 1st, and then, so that's good news. Hopefully she'll be good. Um, and then uh, Trevor, as you know, the uh, receivership case is moving forward. Yesterday we went to court and Mr. Aubert was appointed as the receiver immediately. So he will be boarding and securing that property, which is a good thing, 91 Stillwater Road. 91 and 97 Stillwater Road. Yeah. So, so, so that's a good thing. Get, it gets the town off the plate of that. Mm -hmm. It's not something we want to be involved with, but it's quite a mess. Um, so, I don't know, Trevor, you want to say anything about that? Yeah, it was, it was an inter gate? interesting process where, um, you know, the first day we couldn't do it because of Microsoft's downage uh, on Friday, but we came back on Tuesday and, um, and uh, so, so, yeah, went off without a hitch. The, the receivership was given to Obear and um, he'll jump on securing it and getting going. He's done this a bunch before. He was there on another case of similar kind of thing so I feel pretty confident he'll be able to get that you know get the place cleaned up and hopefully auctioned off and you know turn it into some good property that people can build on or 
rehab the uh, house and sell uh, yeah. it. Who um, knows? Or whatever. Whatever. It's not. It's it's going to take a while. It's going to oh, yeah. take. It doesn't happen overnight. It could be you know a couple of years. For sure. By the time it gets cleaned up, and what happens is that Mr. Albert will, will present um, his list of what needs to be done to the court, and that will be done relatively soon, and then he'll start on that process, but the court has to approve what he's doing, so he can't just like pad the bill. It's not going to happen because the court has to approve, um, the court has to approve everything he's doing. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, mo monthly, the Board of Health agent, or whatever the Board of Health agent may be, will go there and just do a quick summary and send a, a report to the Attorney General's office. And the Attorney General's office will, will, will go to court each month and say what's been done and what needs to be done. So hopefully, you know, maybe less than two years, but it, it's a big piece of property and there's a lot of issues with it. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're working on that. Anything else you can think of, Trevor? I think that's probably about it. Yeah, yeah, and was it. we we had some issue with the uh, uh, redesign at DA, but you've resolved that internally uh, with the building department. Yep. Yes. Yep. Yep. Looks good. All right. Uh, anything else, Valerie? Um, no, but I know we have you guys have some interviews coming up next. Next week, maybe? I don't know. Yes. I don't know, whenever, whenever Casey said that, you know, when yep. she could get them together or get the um, second person in line or whatever, get, get them on, on a schedule to be interviewed. So what we'll do is, uh, and I spoke to Richard about it, that we would stay on until you got somebody in place because we're certainly not going to just bail and leave you with an empty seat. Thank you. Appreciate the help. We'll get on it right away. <laughs> okay. okay. Anything, anything else you guys have? No, to that's ask it. Or Thank you. Thanks, Valerie. Thank you, Valerie. Okay. Have a good night. You yep. too. All right. So um, we earlier decided to move move ahead on uh, just passing over sunny days. So um, we have uh, next up um, is the possibility of setting the special town meeting date. Um, we have a few issues that we need to bring before the voters um, and we're looking at two dates. The calendar this year is really full because we have a national election and um, uh, which puts a burden on town administrative staff so we're looking to consider October 7 and October 15. Um, Casey can you talk to a little bit about your discussions with Cassie Sanderill about which which date might be the better of the two? So Cassie and I have discussed this. I've also reached out um, and asked whether the space at the auditorium is available, and I've reached out to council and the moderator and asked about their availability. So Cassie okay. and our discussion, Cassie and mine, was really about the amount of work that's necessary on her part because she's between a primary election mm -hmm. and the general election. And there's a lot of tasks involved. This is also her first election. Yeah. Um, this only happens every four years, but it's her first one. Mm -hmm. So she was a little concerned about that. Basically, we landed on the fact that October 7th is a better date of those two choices. Um, because the closer she gets to October 19th, the harder it is for her to be able to focus on that because her early voting starts the 19th. Right. And she has to do a lot of prep prior to that first day. Um, so the 7th is better. The moderator can do the 7th. Um, town council can do either the 7th or the 15th. And the space is available on either day over at the auditorium. So if you wanted to pick the 7th, we could do that. Do, will we have, uh, could you? I don't know if you checked with Brenda yet. Are we going to have free cash certified by I the 7th? I did check with Brenda. I had that conversation. In fact, that was one of the things that Tim and I discussed. Yeah. She believes she'll have free cash certified. Generally, it's usually earlier, if there's but any funding that yeah. we need, we use free cash. Although right. you can you can additionally appropriate. Mm -hmm. But that's I've never seen Deerfield do no, that. No, we always just use free cash um, for something. So she's pretty yeah. confident we'll have free cash by then. <clears throat> okay. Um, it is a little earlier than normal, but mm -hmm. the sooner we get the word out if that's what you want to do the better 
Um, I drafted a motion that does two things. It sets the date and opens the warrant because we need to get that warrant opened in case people have yep. other items. I already know of at least two items that we're going to see. But if you guys want to, the best date of the two dates is the 7th. Yeah, so um, for discussion purposes, I'm going to make a move to set the date for special town meeting of October 7, 2024 at 6 p.m. and declare the warrant for special town meeting open with the said special town meeting warrant to close on or about August 30, 2024. Second. So um, <clears throat> any discussion? Um, I'm just going to figure out the other things we're going to need to figure out for that, right. the funding for that. And um, is there a, a date certain by which we have to close the warrant? Yes. So if you... Um, August 30th. Is it August 30th or is so it So that was later. my suggestion. Sometimes we go beyond that date if we're waiting for information, but I like to give people a deadline so that we have time to finalize the articles and yeah. present them to council for review. Mm -hmm. So and that's the reason committee. I said that, but it's not a hard and fast rule. We've passed it before. Yep. Right, but basically, there is like a, is there a statute that says you have to do this 21 days before? Or? You, so you have to post the warrant right, for not less than 14 days prior. Okay. We've already, Cassie and I already discussed the date that we need to have the warrant posted, and that's got to be September 20th. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if we close the 30th, it gives people a little over a month, and it gives us a little bit of leeway if we know something's coming through, but we don't have complete language. Well, hopefully this won't and be And about 10 days to have council review. At the moment, it's not looking like a huge warrant, but things drive up. <laughs> Thing, <laughs> things creep out of the woodwork sometimes. As you open a warrant, it all come running. Yep. Any further thoughts? Nope. Is there going to be a problem with the fact that you're between two national elections that you're going to be working this thing? So what I said to Cassie was... A lot of the work that happens around the meeting isn't done by the town clerk. The administrative staff in my office, we prep the warrant, we schedule everything and set up for audio, work with FCAT, um, compile the warrant by doing the requests for articles. Um, we process and make sure that the moderator, town council, and the town clerk have a chance to discuss the articles and what their concerns might be internally. But a lot of the work actually happens. She has to prep things like voting flags. She has to make sure she has uh, workers to, to uh, sign people in. And if we need to have, if we think there may be a question where you would have a secret ballot or anything, we have, she prepares all of that. A lot of that stuff is, always, is already ready. Mm -hmm. um, and I told her point blank we would help her with any of that that we needed to. But the real work is actually taking the minutes. And that's when I, we provide the motions. The town administrator generally white, writes the motions, works with Brenda, works with, for proofing, works with council and the moderator. So we provide most of that stuff. She hits the ground running when she has to make sure she has the materials, the people, and attends town meeting. So I think we can minimize it to the extent that it's possible, but that was one of her concerns. So, you know, Other I think... Other than that, it's later in November, which is... It would be later in November if we had to do it, and it would be between the general and Thanksgiving. We wouldn't want to do it the week of Thanksgiving, but right. there's a period after each election where you have to allow for ballots to come in. It's right. a five-day period to certify all those ballots. So there's yeah, really not a, a great time. Um, so we were trying to figure out how we could work within the parameters of the 7th or the 15th. Okay. I Thank think you. we're good. So um, if there's no further discussion, the motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Blake Gilmore, aye. Tim Helchi, aye. So we've set the October 7th as the special town meeting date. Yep, and I will notify, I'll send an email out and notify people um, that the meeting's been set and that the warrant's opened. Give me the closing date for the warrant again. August 30th. August 30th, 30th unless tentative. something comes up. Yep. Um, all right, so um, do you have an update on Eastern Ave? Or? I do. Thank okay. you. Hold on, let me get to my notes. 
So this is the uh, this is the discussions we've been having about uh, maintenance of a farm swale along Eastern Ave to try and increase um, and restore water movement in that area. Yeah, we had an email from one of the residents, Fred Becta, about this. So I've been actually. Um, Christopher Dunn and I have both worked with Chris, talked to Chris Miller. Um, Christopher did some research about the easement that we have to maintain that space. And there was some back and forth with council looking at that easement. Um, one of the concerns was whether we would need a right of entry for other properties if we were going on a residence property. That's generally how we get mm -hmm. access if we need it. But Christopher and town council think that the easement should cover us as long as we stay within the right of way. Because the, it does outline what the right of way does as, is as well. So the concern is actually talking to Pete Law and perhaps going to Conservation Commission to work in the area. Um, it may not be covered under the bundled NOI. So I think Christopher Miller is gonna be He's already reached out to Pete Law about other issues, so okay. I suggested okay. today when I talked to him that he rope Pete into walking it. Listen, I thought that we did it just because that was the whole point of that bundled NOI is to do the ditch on Eastern. To do, I, I don't know. I maybe not. Yeah, I we'll think they chat. have to. I think they have to chat about it and look yeah. back at the we bundled also, NOI. And we also need to come up with funding. Like who's paying? Like I mean. Where are you getting the money to do this, um, and how much? I don't much know is what gonna it's going to cost. So those are so the pieces I haven't even had yeah. a conversation about because yeah. the more the question really was, do we notify the residents? When do we notify them, and what do we tell them? After and we so know how much it is. After right. we know whether we have to go to Concom, that's going to push things because mm -hmm. that takes a while. The yeah. other thing is, is the issue that Christopher Dunn brought up after talking to Chris Miller was that it's easier to do something like this in the fall after the leaves have dropped and you have better access right. because the machinery is going to be, oh, yeah. you know, the tree line's close to that too. Mm -hmm. So that could also be the issue. So to the extent that we have anything to say to people, if we were going to do a mailing or a delivery of notification, we don't. I don't know that we have enough information right this second, but those are the elements of what's being followed up on okay. right now. Okay, that's good. Right, and um, I think there was also some thought that the uh, soil might be less wet, or it might In be firm up the as fall. the ground gets cooler, so that you could do a, a better job of making sure the grade is appropriate, yeah. et cetera. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's yes, true. That, was, that makes sense. That came through in a conversation between Christopher and Chris. But this, uh, it turned out that, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, that uh, Kevin Scarborough had it, had this in his work plan he or, did. Mm -hmm. uh, as something that needed to be addressed. So yeah. Chris Miller is picking up on that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. And so, we've, we've been back and forth with, with Fred Becta, and um, hopefully he sharing this information with his neighbors um, but once we have a really right robust plan in place and figure out how to pay for it um, you know we we will reach out to folks yep. so I think the first thing I have to do is send Fred an email and tell him what we just talked about yeah so that he's aware and really I don't honestly I wouldn't recommend that the board put anything out until what you just said until right. we have an idea of what is necessary we know how much it's going to cost and we have a timeline to do yep. the work yep sounds good okay thank you all right um so Trevor can yeah. you talk to us about this old Deerfield sure sewer rehabilitation proposed change order number one yes yeah, so um so this is the the second part of the uh, old Deerfield uh, sewer line that goes, you know, le uh, a couple years ago, DA helped us with uh, funding a rehabilitation of the sewer line f as it gets to the plant through the fields there. We did some of the units, uh, some of the pipes, meaning uh, uh, filled them up inside, you know, put a sleeve in versus um, dig and replace. We did some dig and replace. We did some sleeving of them. Um, we awarded a couple weeks ago the, the bid that we got uh, for, for doing the rest of the project, which was the 
you know, sleeving of the original, uh, the, the pipe. And we had one section of pipe that we needed to cut and replace, uh, dig up and replace. And that wasn't bid on um, because it was just one pipe and nobody really wanted to tackle it. Um, but uh, so we had asked the person, the, the entity who in situ form, who, who got the original bid to do a change order, find a contractor, and, and get a, a price to do that last pipe. He was able to get Ludlow, who did the last project for us. Um, so this is a change order to fund that, um, that additional project. We had uh, had a budget of around 500,000 for the project. I think we're gonna be around half of that when we're all done, said and done. Um, and this is a project that, that uh, DA has helped us with. We, we paid for the engineering, they're paying for the, for the work, and we're, we're very grateful for DA for stepping up and funding that. So, um, so this is, I'll move that the select board approve the Old Deerfield Sewer Rehabilitation Project Phase 2, Change Order 1, in the amount of $122,221 for a total contract price of, of the project of $239,023. This change order to be effective July 22nd, 2024 and authorize the town administrator to sign on behalf of the select board. Second. Thank you. Yeah, and just again, to, just as a reminder, um, as Trevor mentioned, um, Deerfield Academy is paying for the construction costs related to this, so this entire Two hundred thirty-nine thousand twenty-three dollars is not um, not coming out of residences. No, real estate grateful. taxes. Um, so, any further discussion? Nope. Hearing none. All those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Blake Gilmore, aye. Tim Hilchey, aye. Great. This keeps us on schedule too, because we're trying to get it done. Yep. Like around August eighth. So. Yeah, and they have an incentive to finish the work before their students arrive. Yep. Exactly. So, thank you for that. Appreciate it. So we've already done the scams things. Let's see. Done the Frank and the Land Trust. All right. Um, and we've talked about the Leary lot. Um, you don't, do you have anything to report on Stillwater? Are we still in the? Uh... I do, okay. just a little bit. So I reached out to council um, to see, she had sent an email to MassDOT to see what they had for survey guidelines. Mm -hmm. um, and I just did read- Just let me quickly remind, this is, we're talking about the Stillwater Bridge repla Replacement Project that's supposed to get underway. Two is years from now. Two, right, two years from now, but we have a lot of preliminary work and possible land taking, et cetera. Sorry, yes. So as part of what we have to develop, we have to do surveys and appraisals of any pieces of land we would take by eminent domain. We also, once we have the information, we have a better idea of what we would need to appropriate to pay for that, that project. This has already got a placeholder in front of capital uh, because we know that we're going to have to pay a certain amount for the land that is required after as part of the project to, because they're going to fix the bridge and it impacts the two roads that are adjacent. So. Council had reached out to DOT to see if they had guidelines on the survey work. And at the same, prior to that, she had said to me, I need to use, a, the town needs to use a specialized surveyor for this. So what I did, I went back in my email, I don't see a response from DOT at this point, but I did send council an email and ask her for the name of the surveyor so we can get on their list. I, the town needs to contact them so that they're aware that we're gonna need the work done. So that's the only thing I have for an update for that, but I'll wait and hear, hopefully, hear from DOT before the end of the week, at least whether they've acknowledged, you know, that they need to give us guidelines. Okay. Um, and we've... Do we, do we know uh, the property that we're gonna have to take? Is that something that's already on the table or is that something that has to be surveyed? We have approved plans. If you want to look at them, I have them. Okay. Um, and it does show the portions of certain parcels. And I do believe we have all the ownership on the plans as well. And was that, I know we had approved a survey, right? Or a, a, somebody to come, wasn't Eaton going to come and survey those spots? Well, that's the thing. We approved some funding for right. it. Right, but we haven't done that. But we haven't survey. done it. Okay. So we need to know what our guidance is for the survey work okay. so that we can accomplish it. All right. Right, and the, and the uh, town council's uh, 
opinion of hiring somebody who's familiar with the state regs around this surveying work. And then afterwards, we need to go through an, uh, an appraisal process for right. determining fair market value or whatever the basis for the purchase is, right. whichever purchases we have to make. Yep. Um, some of this land might be in DCR already, is that correct? So there is one element of this that we have to land on, and that is we would be asking the legislature to remove a portion of land from Article 97, which is conservation land. And the requirement for that is you have to replace it, so you have to dedicate the same amount of land towards um, conservation restriction. You have to basically swap. Is that that state or is that under town state? state? It's in, it's the state. So what you have to do it's a two step process and it's essentially a home rule petition where you yep. ask the voters to approve this replacement land and ask the the legislature to approve the same. So council will give us language for that and the timeline. So special town meeting. This is a piece of all of this. The timeline to get this done, I'm kind of concerned if we don't hear back from DOT mm. about us being able to hit a special in October. So for this, for these particular issues that have to go through town meeting, um, there won't be more information until we hear back from council and DOT. Okay. And uh, if we can't do the special town meeting, we will have the uh, normal spring annual town we meeting. We will, but it might be too late by then. So mm -hmm. we really, that's, we that's going to be a follow up from with council once I notify everybody yeah. that you've you set the meeting and open the warrant. Yeah, let them know we need that. Because yeah, she's right. supposed to give us some information too. Yep. Okay. And is, um, is Christopher Dunn involved in this process? Or are you handling it? So far, I've handled it. Okay. Um, I just wondered, you know, um, I, I, I'm fully uh, happy to have one person do it. Mm. Just, to, right. you know, DOT seems like a potential bottleneck. <laughs> so, although we've had some good luck with them recently, so. We have. Uh, just want to, if, if we're going to prod them, let's do it weekly rather than every other week. <laughs> yep. Okay. Thank you. Um. Do, I know we haven't hit on select board announcements yet, but when we do, I have a few. Yeah, let's let's do them. that now. Um, yeah. Just yeah, because I, I know mean, if you were done. With now, I think that Christopher Dunn talked about the uh, campus and projects. Yeah. So I think we're okay there. Um, we've done the appointments to scams. Are there any other board committee things that we need to take up, Casey? Under the um, under the placeholder, in, there is in, one thing. Yeah, okay, that's the employment and other policies thing. So, yes. Okay. So I've been discussing the position that was approved, the assistant town accountant position that was approved with Brenda, mm -hmm. and she'd like to get started on that. We need to develop a job description, and so she, I'm going to pass something on to her so she can start looking at it. What the board will probably see next month. Um, and I'm not exactly, it depends on how long it takes us to fix it, to, you know, mm -hmm. fiddle with it. But you could expect to see it as early as the 7th or on the 20s, whatever the second meeting is. I can't okay. remember off the top of my head. I would want to present this to personnel board concurrently mm -hmm. so that we get approval yeah. within a few weeks and the vacancy can be developed. That'd be great. So, but we need to get that started because there's a lot of work that's going on, especially around the bands. I know. And, you mm -hmm. know, we have we, a lot happening right there's now. There's a lot going on financially. And this is um, the, the sixth month. Um, is this the sixth month uh, sort of position where they would be shadowing and learning mm -hmm. from yes. Brenda because in anticipation of her? Yes. Moving to retirement. Especially yes, uh, because she's scheduled to retire the end of the fiscal year. Especially right. it'd be great if she was in with budget season, you know. That's one That's of the, the reasons key. that yeah. we want to do that. So that they can uh, see how the process works in yep. a yes. different different community. Okay. And we don't know how long it's going to take. Sometimes right. it's hard to attract town accountants. It's one of the jobs that's very in high demand, but there aren't a lot of people qualified to do it. Right. So... Once we have the job description settled, then we can pursue the vacancy and hopefully mm -hmm. get someone hired. Now, does personnel meet 
earlier or later in the month? They meet the third Monday of the month generally, so they're scheduled to meet on the 19th. 19th, and then we would be able to take it up on the 21st. Yep. Okay. That's what I'm thinking. Even if I gave you a first read, even if there was a first read available for the select board at the beginning of the month, um, I would want the board to vote no later than the 21st if, if mm -hmm. you could swing it. Yep. Okay. All right. Um, so we, let's move on then to this like announcement yeah. stuff that we yep. did. So um, let's see. The other day we had um, we met at the fire station for the um, Franklin Regional Council of Gover Governments, uh, the COMIRS, uh, which is the emergency 800 system that everybody is on now. All our first responders are on to celebrate that uh, that program and. Um, uh, Jim McGovern was there, and uh, uh, all the representatives from local reps and Senate, uh, state Senate were there, which was great. Um, and so that, that was great to kick that off. Um, uh, USDA w had been part of that um, program, too, and so Lyndon Nichols was there, and uh, he sent on an email. We talked a little bit about, um, and here I'll touch on the effluent pipe a little bit, um, we asked it, you know, is there any programs that, you know, maybe there would be some funding, some grant, some loan, low interest loan. We are applying for that, um, that work through the state revolving fund for funding, but we won't know till the end of summer on that, um, whether, whether, you know, we get any help from them and how much that is. Um, so we, you know, always reaching out anywhere, asked if they had any programs. He talked about RCAP. And he sent on an email, and I, I hope it got to everybody. Yeah, yeah. and we're talking about uh, possibly getting grant money to do the engineering. Right. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. So, um, so that effluent pipe, um, we noticed at our last uh, construction site meeting that it had failed, and it was a lot of the water that came from the from the storms we had. So the river had been up and down, up and down, really high this winter. And the, the emergency storms we had in April washed out the pipe, washed out the bankment. Uh, we think uh, the storm water washed the pipe. The pipe had already been failing, broke in the middle of the embankment. Um, it was never part of the original project. You know, we only worked on the plant itself, not the pipe going out of the plant because uh, it had was working, you know, several years ago and wasn't an issue. Um, so it was never a part of the original project. So. Um, so we're looking at the cost, you know, to build a head wall, dam the river, do all of that. It was never part of the original project. So, um, uh, but feel free to call me anytime. I can talk more on that. Um, so, yeah, really excited about the Comiers project. Really excited about, um, you know, ho hopefully working with USDA again and the RCAP to help with some engineering help on that. And then... Um, what else did we do? I think that that's it. I just wanted to hit on that Comiers thing, which right. Was and uh, just to follow up on that, um, mm -hmm. basically this this celebration was for a four hundred fifty thousand dollar grant that was arranged through McGovern, Warren, and Markey's offices to um, get um, compatible radios to work with the the state's interoperable system. It replaces uh, the need for us to have our own infrastructure. Um, as Chief Pachork mentioned at the at the, at the uh, ceremony, um, the the region has been exploring buying used parts on eBay, uh, which is not a, an ideal situation for for having uh, you know public safety uh, communications. So we don't know what future costs might be handed on to the towns, but um, we are fully compatible with uh, the state system, and we're the first county to do that. So. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's our scams, that's our police, that's our fire, um, and any other first responders. So it's pretty and it was a two-part thing. It was right. a couple million for all the radios, and then all the pagers was the 400 yeah, and the, something. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Huge yep. help from USDA on that. So there were a lot of happy first responders. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's, that's yep. it for you know, Do you have anything that? like uh, just one thing, I had a uh, resident from up on Sand Gully that was talking to me about a gravel pond. The uh, gravel in the roadway up there, and before I got to talk to Chris Miller, it was already taken care of. So kudos to the 
highway department for getting nice. right on that thing. So good deal. The, the resident actually uh, texted me back to let me know it was already taken care of. Yep, and so I, I definitely want to hook up with Chris Miller about the river road situation just to make sure I know which section he's talking about. And, um, you know, because I know there are a lot of residents, it's a long road, and, uh, you know, I'm sure that there are more than two or three areas of concern out there. So, so there's one other thing I was, uh, that we had, I had brought up was the uh, formation of a sewer committee and I'm working on the charge now. Mm -hmm. As soon as I get it ready, I'll see if I can get a copy so you guys so that you can help me put it into a charge. Sure. So, Excellent. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. That'd be great. Um, and we are continuing to look at the, you know, the, do we need to make a charge for the Comcast? Uh, or you the, did. Uh, you voted a charge. Okay. So, so we're, we've you covered that, that part. Ready. Good. We, just need, we just need to appoint some people. Uh, we I need to yeah. appoint right. some people. Right. And so are we... Um, going to notify residents that uh, we need people to volunteer for that we ha you've mentioned it at meetings um do you want me to yeah, schedule see if you, a specific notification yeah if you could uh, get something maybe we could put on the website and and perhaps we could uh, you know get it pushed out into the mm -hmm. public social media i mean it's a it's a once every 10 year thing but it's an important thing mm -hmm. it gives us an opportunity to explore getting better service and hopefully at a more reasonable uh, price question on that i think that with the last time this was done wasn't sunderland involved in this committee as well and Waving i think too. Waley too i think it's because that it gives we us have a better it gives us a vantage point if we do mm -hmm. that so that's right. something we have to look into yeah, as and well. coordinate with those communities I'm, that's I'm right sure, sure it's on their radars but mm -hmm. uh, yeah joyce had mentioned it already too from from waitley right but um, each of our committees I also work just together while we're saying a couple announcements I wanted to thank DPW and the police department and everybody who helped with the storms last week it was um, we're pretty rough coming through the middle of the week and a lot of trees down wires down um, luckily our ditches worked really good all the work we did last year we didn't have any flooding uh, so that was excellent but um, wanted to thank everybody that got on all that stuff and, and cleaned that up. That was, was pretty serious coming through, and, and, uh, but cleaned up pretty quick. Yeah, and I, you know, I know that uh, particularly, you know, Hawks Road and Upper Lower Road were affected by that a lot. And Old Main Street, uh, um, Champneys Inn had some flooding because of the, just the, the short period of time in which the rain comes down doesn't allow for the what typically happens, and particularly with tree, tree uh, damage, all the culverts in the road get blocked, which, which backs up everything, and then, then the water builds up into, uh, you know, up into the doors of cars that are parked out in front of the, that. So, yeah, it was a great response, so thanks for yep. reminding. Yep. Yeah. Sure. All right. Um, do we have anything else, uh, Casey, that needs to be I have be a couple approved? of other things you, I just want to give. Yeah, well, in your report. That's, I've sort of been going through it, okay. but yeah. There's a couple of things I wanted to give the board an update on. So town council is working with staff and the chair of the open space committee to do the research on that land that they want to consider putting into conservation restriction. There were several parcels and I think there's five mm -hmm. parcels, mm -hmm. yep. but there were some questions about one parcel in terms of article 97 what the allowances were so there is some research that the town clerk needs to do um to better inform council before she can make recommendations for open space to move along with but i would expect that if that information is forthcoming you may need you may see a an article request for town meeting mm -hmm. and I, I may have mis, misheard this, but it, is there any possibility that this one parcel would be a swap, potential swap for still actually, water? Actually, Christopher and I both wondered about that, so that question's been thrown out to council. Okay. She, she was looking into it, um, but she is, I think she needs to, and I haven't checked when their next meeting is. I think it may be next week, but don't quote me. Um, mm -hmm. I think she wants to attend an open space committee meeting and talk to them directly. Lisa does? Yes. Yeah. Oh, good. That's always better. Yeah. 
That way they can have a straightforward conversation and get an idea of sort of where, what Lisa needs um, to, to better help them. Um, we've had, I went to the, I ran the finance committee meeting on Monday and finance committee discussed some budget concerns. They reorganized. Um, David Sharp is gonna be on personnel board where he was working before. He's their, gonna be their representative. Mark Brennan is going to represent Capital Improvement Planning Committee. Um, they discussed something that I did send an email out to you about because Margaret had sent, it was something that was brought up by one of the members, Margaret Nardowitz, and that is the use of a special stabilization fund for roads. So what she did was she found the IGR, which is the information guidance release from the Department of Revenue, and sent it along to me, so I made sure I forwarded it to you via blind carbon copy. Um, it's something I think you could, you'll hear from the Finance Committee about because they seemed interested in trying to do that. So this may come up in future conversations during the budget season. Um, they also reviewed financial policies. So at some point in the next couple months, they will probably forward them to you because the select board actually has to approve them. So there's probably gonna be some conversation about that, but you keep, keep your eyes open. You'll see it come forward. So I know it was preliminary discussion that Margaret brought up, but is there, is this fund going to sort of encumber DPW funds or? So what it would be is it would be, it's a process that's very similar to a debt exclusion vote. Um, what it would be is a request for funding for road maintenance, specifically from the town. We don't, the town has never allocated true funding for road repairs. And this last year and early this year, we've seen a lot of damage. Yeah. So Margaret's suggestion was to use what they call a special stabilization fund. So what you do is you create a fund, and this has to go to town meeting. Right. You create a fund, and then you approve funding to seed it. That piece, the funding piece, is a two-part piece. You have to have the request through town meeting. And I would do this in one article if it were me, and I think council would write it that way too. So you would set up an article for approval at town meeting, but you also have to get a ballot vote. And what the special stabilization fund does is it continually funds road repairs. There's, I haven't digested the entire thing. That's why I sent it to you guys. What I didn't do was print it out, so I'm sorry, I'll print it for you. But it's something that if you read through it, I think it would be a healthy conversation later on as you get closer to the budget season. Yep, I just wanted to flesh out it's, what we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, it's, it's so. money that you vote, that you continually use. The select board has to take certain votes throughout the year, but you continue to vote it on an um, the select board votes it on an annual basis once it's established and funded. Right. And so is that cumulative? Is that something that you're going to continue to add to if you don't use it one year? It stay, it grows, That's something that it becomes, has to be discussed. So you have okay, to discuss so, your funding sources. And the amount that goes in it every year, is that voted by... So this is board? the piece I've only skim, skimmed it. I haven't reviewed it okay. in depth myself. But this is what I, this is why I think as you get toward the budget season, which is coming up quick, mm -hmm. as you we get toward the budget early. season, this is a healthy conversation to sit with finance committee and hold. Because I think even Brenda wants to have a more in-depth conversation. She's gonna read through the IGR too. We haven't done one before, so we have to refresh our own memories about them. We need to put skims into our... So those are other questions, but frankly, it's it's, not a bad idea to have consistent funding for road repairs because we've just we can't keep up with the paving chapter 90 doesn't yeah cover chapter 90 it, isn't does. keeping up with half the stuff that we need to be able to do and a lot of towns have done this i know road did it recently in their last year and a half they did it mm -hmm. they funded an account to deal with roads um and it, i don't remember how they did it i would have to talk to the i know the finance committee chair i would have to talk to him but there's ways, and this is one of them. So it's just, she brought it up. Finance committee was interested. She gave us information. I just shared it with you. It'll be on your radar screen. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and, and Margaret is uh, going to be helping our neighbor Sunderland, I, I understand, from the Yes, Greenfield Margaret Reporter. is going to be the interim over there. Yeah, so they are losing their TA, town administrator. Yes. Yeah. He's taking a state job. Jeff oh, yes. Kravitz is going on to an economic development job for the state. Oh, so maybe you can funnel some money back our way. I, you know, I did in fact say that to him. Good. <laughs> he knows he knows what we need. He does. Good. So. Well, that would be nice to have have her help there. It would. Yep. It would. Um, so we've had, tree, I've had some stuff going on with Treehouse. I did talk to the building commissioner, um, and public safety personnel are still conversing with a THBC staff. Um, on ironing out the details of the EAP for the half marathon. Mm -hmm. there You will see a request at the next meeting to write a letter of support because they've they're, beginning, they're in the process of applying to DOT for their permit for the half marathon. Okay. They need a letter of support. You furnished one last year, yep. so I, well. it was way too late for me to even draft anything. Okay. But I'll just use what we used before. And yeah. It'll be presented at the next meeting. So um, Allison had reached out to me today about it. Um, so I've been working on those things. There's a couple equipment requests that are going to require some work between departments on them. Um, MVP is coming up. So the MVP annual reporting is coming up. I hadn't done it, Christopher. Or Chris Nolan was doing it, so I'm in the middle of reviewing the guidance, and I'll be talking to Andrew Smith if I need help and Chris Curtis, but that's got to get done by the end of the week or the beginning of next week to meet their deadline, which means we do the report, furnish all the invoices, get it over to them, and they'll review it. So we'll be, I'll be working on that, too. Um, oh, the entryway at DES looks... The good. Entry, so I mean, they're starting out there. They're anyway. starting digging out it, there. Digging it out. Getting they're rid of all the bushes. Out there. Um, and we've actually got bills that we're going to be paying soon for that. Okay. So Berkshire design bills, and I think we have some construction bills too. But don't quote me. I all have right. to go back and look at them. I get a lot of email. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Um, you'll there be some updates coming up from legal, not just on the stuff that I've already talked about, but. Steam mill yes, road litigation. We'll get updates about that after today. next week. Hoping to get an update on that. Um, and then I talked about the oh personnel manual. So there's policies the board should consider, and what I discussed individually with members of the board was presenting policies at the same time to the select board and the personnel board. Because that way you alleviate any shock about, you know, mm -hmm. not seeing something. There is a timeline yeah. in the bylaw for the select board to approve a policy that's been developed and recommended by the personnel board. So to alleviate some of that lack of communication, mm -hmm. I thought the process should be to present draft policies to both boards. Okay. There is several things that we need to include, I thought, and I mentioned this, I think, at the last meeting, I thought I'd hand out a couple of policies and have people start chewing on them so that you can get better acquainted with the process you're going to have to take to approve them. And things like we don't have an ADA policy. And luckily, the study that we did that brought us to the point where we could create a manual identified a list of policies we need to add. So I yeah. thought we'd just stop, start knocking them yeah. out. Yeah. Um, and we have draft policies from the study itself. They do need to have a final review of council. Right. So I'm hoping to be able to send at least two of them to council for review prior to the seventh, so I can get the information out in time for both committees to review them by the 19th. Um, there is one other thing that we need to talk about, and that is, you saw Valerie here earlier. Um, because we haven't been able to hire a health agent, I did speak to her about extending the appointment for her so that we have some coverage. She said she would hang on for as long as we need, but yeah. hopefully, we'll hopefully get we it can done. get this done. Yeah. Um, so I actually wrote, this is sort of an item unanticipated because I didn't, wasn't able to have that conversation with her until yesterday. 
Um, but there is a motion at the end of your set of motions to extend the Board of Health agent appointment until such time as a new permanent person is onboarded. Okay, um, so that would be my break. last request to you guys. Yes. Um, so um, I make a motion. I move to extend the appointment of Valerie Bird as the Deerfield Board of Health agent from July 31, 2024 until such time as a permanent health agent is onboarded into that position. Second. Um, yeah, this is a great thing. Uh, Dick Kalaszewski has also said that he would help out um, until we can fill a position. And, um, and, and thereafter, I think we appointed him as, as an on-call if, if yes, somebody needs Yes, he's been appointed vacation. as sort of a, so, an on-call. Um, thanks for following up with Valerie on that. Um, any further discussion? Nope. All those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Blake Gilmore, aye. Tim Helge, aye. So the last thing I wanted to tell you guys about is minutes. Um, we're still trying to catch up. I started going through the old files of what's been what's been drafted and what has or hasn't been approved. What I'm planning on doing is handing a schedule of, of minute completion out to people. And it would include me, too, because we need all hands on deck for this. Right. So it's a combination of using what we have for AI from our me current meetings yep. and using whatever AI tools we can find. But it really does take time because you do I have know. to reflect at least some flavor of the conversation or the discussion and then each of the motions. Yep. Now that we have motions written, it's easier, but staff are going to have to sit and watch the sections where motions are read or spoken so that we can craft, so that we can grab that language and make sure everything's correct. So I do have some older minutes that I'd like to be able to present to the board at the next meeting. Yeah, I'm not thinking I'm done. Yes, That's please. Mm -hmm. And um, in conversation with Brenda Hill, um, she mentioned that uh, one of the people that was considered for the assistant town clerk might have experience doing yes. this. And yes, that I was going to reach out. So that was my next question. Yeah. Would the board give me the authority to bring yes. him on board yeah, to, yeah. Do, to start doing that work? Because most of this stuff is watching, um, watching the videos and being able to take Take the video tech, take the video and, and use AI to turn it into text summaries. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, I think that would be great. So, do you need a motion for that? If there's consensus from the yeah. board, I'll just go ahead and do it. Yep. You believe yep. that? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, that would be so great. Be and and I think we we thought that it might make sense to try and get 2024 fully. As yes, that you and had then said that before. Work backwards. So yeah. that was the initial conversation that Pat and I had, was work on the most recent ones and then work our way backwards. So I started looking at those, and that's when I realized that there are some older minutes of 24 that we need to deal with. Yep. She's been working on the last meeting set of minutes, but she's been sick. Yep. So we're behind on that. But I literally was trying to come up with a list so that we can organize how we deploy our time. Yes. Good. So. Excellent. Um, and that's all I have. All right. Um, well, uh, has anyone else got anything? Just one last thing. Sure. When um, Tria uh, had their last concert, I actually drove around town mm -hmm. and sat at different locations where people were outside their houses and sat and talked to them. The noise level was fairly low at that point. In fact, if I didn't shut my truck off, I couldn't hear it. So basically, I think it's going to depend on each one of these concerts as to how it's going to affect the town. And the wind and stuff, too, because some people right. are like, oh, I can hear it usually, but today I can't. And right. you know, I felt some of it on it social media. It also has to do with atmosphere, anything atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Cloudy sky, cloudy mm -hmm. night, that kind of stuff. Humidity level. Yep. Um, is Old yeah. Crow Medicine Show, was that the one? Yeah, no there idea. was some drumming in that, and I yeah. think, uh, but yeah, I I, most in. of the com comments are pretty good on that. Mm -hmm. So Okay. And... And it was, like I said, and I was talking to people that complained, and they said, I can't hear it tonight. Yeah, so I know. That yeah. was a good thing that we were, you know, yeah. again, it was. And we are c continuing to pursue, um, uh, you know, working with Treehouse to, you know, keep it ex examining and maybe come up with a, uh, a reliable system of right. reporting. And, uh, well, and also we're working with town council to clarify what our bylaws actually say, so. Right. Um, 
Oh, sorry. Yeah. I just I read Adam Sokolowski's, um, you know, r report out of, of the show, and he said it went off without a hitch. Much yeah. they're getting much better at like crowd managing, management, crowd yeah. management, dealing with issues, people in and out, parking, the tickets, and um, and he said the noise was pretty reasonable there that night as yeah, well. Was, so yeah, I'm sure other people were complaining because, right. you know, it, it'll happen. But, but. Like I said, he actually asked, I, I talked to him and he asked me to come in and I said, no, I'm just going to run around town and see how it yeah. looks. But cool. I was in front of the treehouse itself. I was in front of the building, not over yeah. where the stage was. And it was very reasonable right good. there. So just to let you, and again, it depends, it depends on the concert. On, yeah. Because some of these guys... They are an, a quieter group, right? Other than some others, so I mean, yep. you're gonna, yeah. you may have some okay. issues. Okay, thank you, <clears throat> Roger. We had public comment earlier, so um, you can talk to me after the meeting, or you can come back to the next meeting and, and raise your issue. I don't mean to be a stickler, but uh, you know, um, we need to, you know, com complete these meetings. So, um, is there anything else? Nope. If not, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Chairman McDaniel, aye. Blake Gilmore, aye. Tim Helchi, aye. Thank you.